Hi guys, I am joined by one of my most favorite people in the whole world today, our David Cohen, probably one of your favorites too. David, great to see you. And before we jump into the whole world of sabermetrics, please give us a family update. How's everybody? Well, Nancy, thank you. It's good to be with you too. Uh, everybody's doing okay. You know, we're getting along like everybody else, just dealing with the new world that we live in and trying to homeschool a, an eight-year-old boy who's uh, a handful. And I'm sure a lot of parents out there can relate to uh, trying to adjust to uh, kids being at home and trying to get them on a distance learning program. And I have to add, he's beyond adorable little Sammy. Well, thank you. Yeah, he's been great so far. I mean, uh, kids are very resilient. So, I, you know, I think the, as each day goes by, they kind of understand what's going on. It's, it's a tremendous learning experience for young children about how the world is so inter interconnected. And we're all in this together. And I think he understands that now probably as well as anybody. Well said, David. As always, that's what you do. Okay, let's get to work. We're going to talk sabermetrics today. First question, when did you even get into it? And when did you realize it was going to be important? You know, Nancy, I got into it uh, through my agent back in the early 90s. And these were the early, early days of sabermetrics, probably even pre-sabermetrics. But we used them for arbitration cases when I played for the Mets and went to arbitration against the, the front office of the Mets. And I really became uh, kind of schooled on the issues, especially with regards to pitchers and how one loss records with pitchers can be very deceiving. Uh, there's so many things that go into a pitcher's performance that go way beyond his one loss record and, you know, his defensive support, his offensive support, uh, what day he pitches on, how many runs they score. There's so many other efforts, so many other uh, uh, things that come into play with regards to pitchers and, uh, you know, I, I think that kind of opened, opened my eyes a lot to uh, the business side of baseball and how you can give credit where credit is due, Nancy. That's really what it's about for me. It's about finding out who really deserves the credit on who won this game or who contributed the most to winning any kind of game on any, any given day. That's so important, David. And that strikes a chord on the discussion of balance and the dominance of the sabermetric world, is it out of balance? You know, I, I think you come full circle with it, Nancy. I think it's a good point that you bring up is, is that, uh, you know, is there still a, uh, you know, a feel in the game? Is there still a place for a gut feeling uh, throughout the course of a game? And I think when you're in, in the middle of a game, then absolutely pitchers and hitters still react by gut feeling. Uh, Numbers can't really uh, come into play when, when, the, when the game is going on. During the middle of a game, pitchers still have to rely on what they feel, uh, what their best pitch is, uh, how they're feeling, how their arm feels, how the baseball feels in their hand. Uh, same for a hitter, a hitter in the batter's box. And I know I've talked to Paul O'Neill about this a lot. Sometimes they just pick up something intuitively that, that's their gut feeling about what pitch is coming next or or what they should do or how they react. So I really believe that during the course of a game, the gut feeling and the feel of the game is still a very, very big part of it, a very important part of the game. Yeah, I was going to bring up Paul O'Neill as well, because he's always said he's a guy that did not want all that information. He did not want to know what was coming. He just wanted to get up there, see the ball, hit the ball. Yeah, there are a lot of players like that, Nancy, that don't really uh, – don't want to get jammed up mentally with, with all the information that's out there. Uh, there are coaches for that. Uh, There's certainly certain players that can thrive with more information. And I think as a coach, that's probably the most important thing that you need to learn about your, about, uh, about your players is who can handle information and who can't. And the ones who can't certainly, you're going to do more harm than good by trying to help them if you inundate them with too much information at once. So. Certainly there's a balance there, and you need to respect that balance if you're a coach nowadays. David, back when all this was starting, did you ever think it would get to the point where it is today? No, I don't think anybody really uh, saw this type of information that, that, that we get today. I mean, 
to me, it's not just about sabermetrics anymore. You know, the whole term analytics has taken a whole new meaning uh, uh, because the, every movement is tracked on the field. It's not just about mathematical equations anymore. It's about movement on the field, about Doppler radar, being able to track every player and every movement that they make in terms of efficiency, how fast they are, um, how fast they throw the baseball, the efficiency of the spin, whether it's off the batted ball or if it's a thrown pitch, uh, you know, what type of uh, spin efficiency is there nowadays? I, I think we've gone way beyond, uh, in terms of analytics, what we ever thought we were going to see on a baseball field. And I wanted to ask you as a follow-up, do you think this focus, this kind of focus and spotlight on analytics and sabermetrics has changed the way guys play the game? I do. I think it's, uh, it's it, with, with each passing year, the older players start to get more receptive to some of, some of this new information. And the younger generation that's just coming up is so easily adaptable to this type of information because that's kind of the way they've already grown up with computers, with social media, with uh, that type of data information that they've been exposed to at a young age. They're ready to go with these type of information. They learn this way. And I know even some of the young prospects in the minor leagues are already way ahead of the game in terms of the new analytics and how to read this information coming at them, how to interpret it. Uh, that they're much more advanced than some of the older players. And I think the older players are catching up right and left. Guys like Zach Britton have talked about how, you know what, from year to year, this is starting to make sense to me. I'm starting to figure out how to utilize some of this information and how to incorporate it to help, help me become a better pitcher or help me improve the design of my pitches, the movement and the grip that I'm using to get the type of movement that I want on my pitches. Let's practically apply some of this stuff. This is so fascinating. A guy like Garrett Cole, take a look at him. Are certain analytical numbers, certain sabermetrics more applicable and more informative with regard to which picture you're looking at? Yeah, I think there is. You know, Garrett Cole talks about now we have a baseline for comparison throughout the league. So we know what an average spin rate on a four seam fastball is. So you can compare to all the other pitchers across the board. And as long as you have that baseline for comparison, then you have credibility. So then you can look at that baseline for comparison and see where you rate and then see if you can improve it or see if, say, throughout the course of a season, maybe you dropped off a little bit. And if you're in a slump, then you can go to that baseline for comparison and compare notes and see, oh, where was I in, in – uh, in July, where am I in August? Where am I in September? Am I getting a little bit fatigued? Does that show up in my spin rate? How do I compare to the rest of the league? I think uh, that's the key. And that's what Garrett Cole talked about most, uh, most importantly is, you know, we now have a, a complete database for, for a comparative nature in terms of a baseline for comparison across the league on everybody that, 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 uh, that comes through the big leagues and even in the minor leagues now, they have this equipment in the minor leagues that everybody now is rated, so to speak. And we know exactly what the average is on every pitch that's thrown or every batted ball for that matter as well. Taking a look at all the sabermetrics, are there certain measures that you feel are the most valuable? You know, I think it varies from, from individual to individual. Um, there are certainly things that are valuable for scouts. And if you're out scouting nowadays, instead of just using the eye test, which I think is still very important, but you also now have some numbers to back it up. So when you're doing evaluation of talent coming up, you now have some punch behind your evaluation. You can, you can back it up with the numbers, uh, to, to, you know, whether that's exit velocity or spin rate for a pitcher. And certainly uh, if I'm pitching in the big leagues nowadays, I, I certainly want to know my numbers, uh, you know, and Nancy, I think it goes back to the golf industry, the golf industry, the, you know, PGA were the first ones to come out with these launch monitors and all of these professional golfers use this information and this technology to get much better. Tiger Woods is one of the premier golfers in the world over his career. And he really benefited from this technology in terms of uh, getting his golf clubs fitted getting the launch angle just right, being able to hit the golf ball, you know, much farther, um, 
being able to, to get his spin rate just right. Now we're using that technology into baseball, and you can design pitches that way. Or hitters can certainly evaluate their launch angle or exactly what they're doing in terms to try to improve and, and, and to get the results that they're looking for. David, if you had access to all of this information, do you think it would have changed how you approached your game? Yeah, I would have loved it, Nancy. You know, I, I was enamored with putting spin on a baseball, with the type of spin to make the baseball move, to make it curve, how to throw a curveball, how to throw a slider, a slurve, everything in between. You know, that was my sweet spot. I was, I was obsessed with how to spin a baseball, and I never had a way to measure it. I never had, a, you know, a tool to use to design pitches, and uh, that's something I would have loved to have been able to do. Uh, to have that information, that technology, to be able to try to design uh, new types of curveballs, new types of sliders, uh, find out the type of movement on on splitters or fastballs. Uh, I, I, it would have been right in my wheelhouse. I would have loved to have had it. I'm actually a little jealous of these guys nowadays that they have these advantages. And just one final question. Do you feel just like perhaps focus on wins and losses and ERA? might have been out of balance back in your day. Is there too much emphasis on a couple of sabermetrics analytics that might be out of balance? You know, I still believe that there, there is a, a balance there between old and new school, so to speak. But I also know that whatever we use to evaluate pitchers and hitters, whether that was just batting average for batters back 50, 20, 30, 40 years ago, or for pitchers, just ERA and one loss record. I think that was woefully inadequate to tell us that the full scale of who did what, who deserved credit, who was the best pitcher, who was the best hitter. I think we have much more numbers nowadays, much more data to kind of give us more information. And who won the game? Who helped you win that game? You know, who did the most? You know, uh, win probability added. Who added the most value to winning the game, winning the World Series championship? Game to game, pennant races, I think the numbers we have now give us a much clearer picture, a much more complete picture of who's, who's doing what and who deserves credit. I got to say, there is nothing better than Baseball Clinic with David Cohn. You're the best. Thank you, Nancy. Always great to talk to you, too. I very much feel the same always. Thanks, David. Until next time, enjoy Florida and the family. Take care. Thank Stay you, safe. Nancy.